Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon are questions on education and lifelong learning. Question number one, Jenny Mara. To ask the Scottish Government what progress is being made on the Scottish Attainment Challenge in Dundee. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Dundee is making good progress in implementing its Scottish Attainment Challenge Improvement Plan, which initially focuses on 11 primary schools and five nurseries involving 2,600 primary aged children and almost 1,000 nursery aged children who live in the most deprived areas of the city. The Scottish Government is supporting their work with a funding allocation of £2.14 million pounds this year. Jenny Mara. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Um, we understand, however, that as much as half of the £2.14 million funding in year one of the four-year challenge programme may be unspent in the 2015-16 financial year and may also uh, be not, will not be available to Dundee City Council to spend on the attainment challenge because it will be clawed back by the Scottish Government. Can she please confirm that no money that has been allocated to Dundee will be clawed back by the Scottish Government and that it will all be spent on the attainment challenge in Dundee schools. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I say to Ms Mara that while it is absolutely correct that um, all of the seven uh, local authorities that are involved in the attainment challenge can only draw down uh, what they spend, it is important uh, for Dundee and the other areas to look at the programme uh, over uh, the four years and we are committed to investing £100 million pounds, um, over the four years and I hope she is reassured that uh, as a government we have invited Dundee to develop their plans uh, for 2016-17 because the investment via the Scottish Attainment Challenge is we do not just allocate a sum of money, uh, councils have to be drawing down what they spend and that additional resource has to be tied in to a bespoke uh, improvement plan. And I also hope that Ms Mara um, is encouraged that at the, the last quarterly meeting on the 12th of January between uh, Dundee City Council officials uh, and my officials that there are very clear signs uh, of uh, increased activity uh, across the, the primary schools and nurseries involved. Briefly please, Colin Beattie. I welcome the First Minister's recent announcement on the Innovation Fund. Could the Cabinet Secretary confirm whether local authorities and schools can apply for this and what will it fund? Well, Cabinet Secretary's question was specifically about Dundee, but if you want to answer briefly. Yes, I'll be uh, very brief, President Officer. Uh, the Scottish Attainment Challenge uh, Innovation Fund uh, is a £1.5 million pound fund. Uh, it was launched at the beginning of the month and it is available to all schools in Scotland which are not already benefiting uh, from the Attainment Scotland Fund. Thank you. Question number two, Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when it last met Aberdeen City Council to discuss education issues. Mr Alistair Allen. The First Minister undertook a private meeting with Aberdeen City Council and Police Scotland on the 2nd of November following the tragic death of Cults Academy pupil Bailey Gwynn. The Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning met with the representatives of the Scottish Local Government Partnership, including Aberdeen City Council, on 18th of November and met with directors of education or their representatives on 19th of November at the ADES conference. Scottish Government officials also met with representatives from Aberdeen City Council in November to discuss their involvement with the Attainment Scotland Fund Schools Programme. Aberdeen City has four schools involved in that programme. Okay, Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, and I thank the Minister for that very comprehensive answer. Aberdeen City has had uh, difficulties in recruiting and retaining teachers. Uh, and the high cost of housing in the city has not helped the situation. Can the Minister outline what actions he has taken to help attract more teachers to Aberdeen? And will he enter into a dialogue with the Housing Minister to see if more investment for housing for key workers can be made in Aberdeen? Minister. Well, the member rightly points to a problem that uh, affects Aberdeen City Council and indeed a number of other authorities in the North East. 
there are a number of measures uh, being undertaken to seek to address this. Key public sector workers are set to benefit from more than 120 new homes which are being developed uh, on the Craig Inches site in Aberdeen. And the Scottish Government is also currently working to uh, a timescale that will see Sanctuary Scotland begin a two-year period of construction in uh, spring uh, of this year. The Scottish Government uh, are having uh, ongoing discussions, which I'm sure will involve a number uh, of ministers and their officials with Aberdeenshire Council uh, in relation to other strategic opportunities uh, to meet what I recognise are very real needs uh, from the teaching profession. Minister, if you turn away from the microphone, the Chamber can't hear you. Lewis MacDonald, briefly, please. Thank you very much. And on, on that basis, will the Minister accept the one thing the Government should not be doing is penalising councils like Aberdeen and other councils in the north of Scotland for the very problem he's described of the difficulty of recruiting teachers? Surely the thing the Scottish Government should be doing, instead of reducing funding for these councils, is supporting them to make the recruitment they need to make. Minister. Well, the, the Member is more than well aware uh, that uh, the Scottish Government finds itself in a situation where its grant has been cut by the UK Government. A fact, of course, he didn't and never mentions in these situations. But what I will say, Order, please. But what I will say is that uh, despite these difficulties, uh, the Scottish Government has uh, set about a, a set out a, 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 a a set out a, a, a number of arrangements with local authorities to ensure uh, that the settlement this year, while very challenging, is fair given the circumstances in which the Scottish Government has been put. Question number three, Chick Brody. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to increase the number of college places funded by the Employability Fund. Cabinet Secretary. Skills Development Scotland commissioning for delivery of uh, employability fund places in 2016-17 is currently underway. Places will be allocated in accordance with that process and on the strength of bids from colleges and other training providers. Separately and in line with standard procedure, the Scottish Funding Council will discuss with colleges the element of the employability fund which it manages. Yes, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. She is of course aware that in 2014-15, Scotland's colleges exceeded their target of 116,269 full-time equivalent places. Figures from the SFC Statistical Bulletin of the 14th of January 2016 showed a delivery of 119,000 uh, equivalent full-time uh, places. It was a combination of 118,407 SFC-funded SFC places, yet only an additional 671 employability places funded by Skills Development Scotland. Mr. Can Brody, she explain question, why? please. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, Mr. Brody is right to say that colleges have exceeded our commitment and have done so uh, every year since 2011. He is also right to say that provision includes the employability fund, which is delivered by colleges and independent <laughs> training providers. The nature of this commissioning or funding arrangements means that, in fact, since 2013-14, colleges have been funded to the tune of £24 million annually by the Scottish Funding Council and Skills Development Scotland to deliver employability fund provision. However, during this period, colleges have also bid into the SDS uh, openly procured funds uh, to deliver places uh, over and above uh, this level of provision. Thank you. Before we move on, Dr Simpson, can I say I do not appreciate an intervention from a sedentary position to the Chair. I will keep members to order. Thank you. Question number four, Margaret McDougall. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what support it is pro providing to local authority education services. Minister Alistair Allen. We provide local authorities with almost £5 billion of annual funding, together with advice and guidance to enable them to provide high-quality education services. We also provide specific funding for building new and improving existing schools, for the initial training of teachers, for the probationer scheme, which integrates them into uh, the, the professional workforce, and for the continuing professional development of teachers and school leaders. We are also providing targeted support for authorities and schools with the greatest concentration of primary age pupils living in areas of multiple deprivation through the £100 million Attainment Scotland Fund. Thank you, Margaret McDougall. I thank the Minister for that answer. 
SNP held North Ayrshire Council is proposing to cut half a million pounds from its education services, and it will be the school's frontline staff that will be facing the brunt of the acts. A survey carried out by the trade union GMB in December found that 100 per cent of their members employed in North Ayrshire schools believe that cutting back on clerical workers, home school inclusion workers and pupil support welfare staff will have a detrimental effect on the services provided by each school. And so do I. Councils across Scotland Could I have are increasingly cash-strapped and further cuts are coming. What assurances can the Scottish Government give me and constituents that no child's education will suffer due to council cutbacks and that the, has the Scottish Government been in contact with North Ayrshire Council regarding this shocking proposal? Minister. Well, over Scotland, uh, the support which is given for uh, education uh, over the peace has certainly uh, uh, been maintained. Uh, and uh, indeed, it's for local authorities individually to justify their own decisions. But what I can say, and I have to return to this point, is if the member has views on why she feels the local government settlement should be changed or increased for local authorities, uh, then the Deputy First Minister has made this point already. The member and her party are free to seek to amend the government and tell the government, and indeed tell Parliament, from where else in the budget, possibly from the NHS or el elsewhere, she feels she would fund an increase in the settlement to local government. Briefly, please, Kenneth Gibson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister tell us how much funding has been provided to North Ayrshire Council to enhance educational attainment through the Attainment Scotland Fund? Minister. Uh, I can certainly uh, respond by, in writing uh, to provide further detail, but I can say that the overall figures uh, for North Ayrshire... Order, please. And I am answering the question that the member has just put to me, is that North Ayrshire have been allocated £1.96 million from the Attainment Scotland Fund this year. This is being used to develop a learning academy with a focus on developing uh, effective literacy and numeracy strategies and to develop nurturing approaches across the authority. North Ayrshire also received £79,000 from the Access to Education Fund this year for projects in schools aimed at reducing barriers to learning for pupils from deprived backgrounds. Question number five, John Pentland. Mr Pentland, is your card in? Can I have Mr Pentland's microphone, please? President officer. Okay. To ask the Scottish Government what information it has on how many non-UK undergraduate EU students are studying in Scotland. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Presiding officer, the most recent data published by the Higher Education Statistics Agency shows that in 2014-15 the number of non-UK EU undergraduates studying at Scottish higher education institutions was 14,300. Thank you. John Pentland. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what does the Scottish Government estimate are the costs and benefits of this and has it made any progress towards implementing management fees? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I hope uh, Mr Pentland is not going to become obsessed with the Constitution or hark back to uh, old, old debates in and around 2014. But in terms of the, the wider spirit uh, of his, his question, I think there is lots and lots of evidence that uh, give testimony to the excellence in our higher education uh, system. And that's the reason why it is an attractive system uh, from, for students across uh, Europe to, to come and study. It is important uh, that uh, whilst we have seen an increase uh, in EU students uh, come to Scotland, that there has also been uh, an 11 per cent increase in first-time de first degree undergraduates, uh, 11 per cent from 2006-07 to 2014-15, uh, and that has to be good news, uh, along with the uh, record levels of uh, Scottish domiciled students uh, being accepted into university. Question number six, Leslie Brennan. Uh, thank you. Can I ask the, to ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning last met representatives from Dundee City Council? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. I met with directors of education or their representatives from a range of local authorities on the 19th of November at the ADES conference. Leslie Brennan. Thank you. Dundee City Council is facing the largest council cut in mainland Scotland, and while teaching staff are protected from the redundancy 
round. Can I ask what reassurances has the Cabinet Secretary sought to ensure the important work for support for learning is not further reduced in the city? Cabinet Secretary. Question, uh, President Officer, and uh, it's the first uh, opportunity I've had uh, formally to uh, welcome her to her position um, in this uh, Parliament. It is important to recognise that the Scottish Government uh, has always treated local government uh, very fairly, despite, as Dr Allen said, uh, the cuts to the Scottish budget uh, from uh, the UK Government. And the 2016-17 uh, draft budget confirmed that we will make available to local government a total funding package uh, of £10.1 uh, billion. Pounds. That's obviously for across Scotland, and that will increase to £10.3 billion pounds, uh, once other uh, sources of funding uh, are included. And I believe that this government is absolutely right uh, to invest an additional £51 million pounds to protect in teacher numbers. Uh, high quality uh, graduate workforce is very important to all of our children in terms of reaching uh, our ambitions to, to close the attainment gap. Uh, saying that, it is important to recognise that there is a, a broader uh, education workforce uh, and it is important to remember uh, that over the piece over Scotland, classroom assistants have actually decreased and not, have actually increased and not decreased. Thank you. If questions and answers are a bit more succinct, we might get on a bit. Question number seven, Anne McTaggart. To ask the Scottish Government whether it considers the replacement of bursaries with loans results in students from the poorest families having the biggest debt and a reduction in terms of widening access. Cabinet Secretary. This year, the Scottish Government has increased the level of bursary available to our poorest students by £125. And in 2016, we will increase the household income threshold for eligibility for the maximum bursary uh, of uh, 1,875 from 17,000 to 19,000. In tough economic times, the Scottish Government is working hard to put as much money as possible into students' pockets. It's something the NUS asked us to do when the new student support package was launched in 2013-14. This, of course, is in stark contrast with the position in England, where new students started a higher education course in 2016-17 will receive no bursary at all. So our approach to higher education means average student loan debt in Scotland is the lowest in the UK and contributes to young people from the most deprived areas of Scotland now being more likely to participate in HE by the age of 30 than they were in 2006-07. Anne McTaggart. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her reply. Um, young people from deprived backgrounds in Scotland who do get the, to university are facing cuts to grants and bursaries and now 70% of Scottish students who emerge debt-free come from better-off backgrounds. Will the Scottish Government restore grants and bursaries to help the poorer students succeed in higher education? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, President Officer, it is uh, this government that has maintained free tuition uh, and we have retained bursaries, unlike south of the border, and we have also uh, retained you know, the educational maintenance allowance. And as I would have hoped that in my original uh, answer, that even in these tough financial times, we will always seek opportunities uh, to put more money into the pockets of students. And we know that student debt is a real issue for young people leaving university, starting their career, uh, or buying their own home, or starting their own family. And I am therefore pleased to say that with our commitment to free tuition, that must have contributed uh, to the Scotland having the lowest average student loan debt. We have the lowest average student loan debt in the UK, the average being uh, £9,500. Compare that with over £21,000 uh, in England. You know, I am confident uh, that we are giving our young people a far better start to their working lives. Briefly, please, George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary is aware that the Conservatives have decided to remove bursary for the poorest students in England and from student nurses, while also removing disabled student support allowance. Can she once again give us an assurance that the Scottish Government will maintain these vital supports for students in Scotland? 
Cabinet Secretaries, briefly as you can, please. Well, we will not be scrapping bur bur uh, bursaries. We will not be scrapping um, DSA support. We have quite a distinct approach uh, to HE and support of students uh, in Scotland. As I say, we are... Um, have succeeded in putting more money into the pockets uh, of students despite uh, the financial pressures that we're under and we will always uh, continue to look for further opportunities. Question number eight, Malcolm Chisholm. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how many students attended Edinburgh College in November 2015 and how this compares with November 2012. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, the Scottish Funding Council is responsible for collecting participation data. Figures for the current academic year 2015-16 uh, will be published uh, shortly uh, in January 2017. Welcome, Secretary, for that uh, answer. But is she concerned that what was the largest uh, college in Scotland at the time of merger has had declining numbers uh, ever since. Decline that seems to be being managed uh, by the college as has handed back three million pounds to the Scottish Funding Council this year because there weren't the anticipated number of students. Uh, and that's it, the, also exacerbated by the fact that the college is introducing a new enrolment uh, procedure which seems likely to make the problem even worse. So will the uh, Cabinet Secretary take a close look at what is happening at the college and Strive to reverse that decline. Cabinet Secretary. Uh Signoff, so let me assure the member that I am taking a very close look uh, at Edinburgh College and that this, the Scottish Funding Council has already you know, given practical uh, and indeed financial support. Uh, the, the news of the, the difficulties being experienced by the college, you know, whether that's in terms of its finances or other matters or in terms of the number of students it is attracting, is uh, disappointing. Um, and I understand that Edinburgh College um, is working with the Funding Council to ensure uh, that the college continues to offer a uh, high quality education for students that will of course help to grow uh, the, the, the local uh, economy. Um, I have indicated the support that the Funding Council has already given. Uh, the Funding Council will continue to support the college uh, to make the changes and improvements uh, needed in both the short and uh, the medium, medium term. Question number nine, Angus MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government when it last met Falkirk Council to discuss education matters. Minister Alistair Allen. The Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning met with directors of education or their representatives on the 19th of November at the ADES conference. Scottish Government officials met with representatives from Falkirk Council in November 2015 to discuss their involvement with the Attainment Scotland Fund Schools programme. Falkirk has one school involved in the school's programme. Angus MacDonald. The Minister may be aware of new figures released showing Falkirk Council's four PFI schools constructed for £63 million under a previous Labour administration in 1998 will have cost around £420 million by the end of the contract period in 2025, and Falkirk Council will still not own them, making it possibly the worst P PFI contract in history. Does the Minister share my serious concerns that Labour's implementation of Tory policies has resulted in the Labour-Tory coalition in Falkirk having a financial black hole in their budgets that is disproportionately higher than the vast majority of Scottish local authorities, with the resultant impact that that will have on education services? Minister. The Scottish Government uh, has made very clear that the PFI approach that was used in the past has not delivered the best value for the taxpayer in Scotland. Uh, and certainly the project in Falkirk mentioned by the member uh, raises some very big questions of that kind. Alongside the Scottish Futures Trust, uh, we've managed and have been encouraging uh, procuring authorities to look at how they can uh, better manage contracts to ensure that they deliver better value for money in the future. Uh, and to identify areas for potential savings, such as through benchmarking, rescoping services, sharing in insurance costs. And we will continue to support and work with authorities to identify where these savings can be made. Uh, but the member makes the important point that we have to learn from some very big mistakes indeed in the past. Question number 10, Liam MacArthur. The President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government how many schools and children in local authorities that do not receive Attainment Scotland Fund support meet the programme's criteria. Cabinet Secretary. 
Presiding officer, the Attainment Scotland Fund is supporting more than 300 primary schools which collectively serve uh, over 54,000 primary age children who live in the most deprived 20% areas in Scotland. This represents 64% of the total number of primary age children uh, living in SIMD 1 and 2 areas uh, across Scotland. We are well aware that there are children living in poverty who do not live in the most deprived 20% areas of Scotland. Uh, that is why the, the Scottish Attainment Challenge uh, also provides a, a package of universal support, uh, including the £1.5 million Attainment Challenge Innovation Fund, which will support other schools, uh, including secondaries across Scotland, uh, to explore and develop innovative approaches to raising attainment. Lee MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response, although it did not really address the question that I asked. I think um, the answer she was searching for was 36 per cent of um, disadvantaged uh, pupils live out with those areas, representing around 30,000 uh, pupils all told. Can she perhaps explain to pupils uh, from disadvantaged backgrounds in Orkney and the other uh, 10 local authority areas why their needs are less deserving than their counterparts in the other local authority areas across Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. We will we'll obviously be debating this issue at length uh, later on this afternoon, uh, and perhaps Mr MacArthur then will uh, you know, take the opportunity to uh, tell us how he intends to pay uh, for all his plans. But it is important to uh, recognise that the Scottish Attainment a Challenge, the approach there is to focus on the areas where there is the highest concentration of disadvantaged youngsters, recognise that in some areas of the country the scale of the challenge is greater. But nonetheless, as I said in my original answer, we do indeed recognise that there are children living in poverty in all parts of Scotland and therefore in the context of any targeted approach that we have to ensure that we have a strong strengthened uh, universal offer to ensure that we have uh, as many uh, strings to our bow as possible to ensure that we are reaching uh, the children uh, most in need and I've already alluded to the, the innovation fund there is the access to education fund there is attainment advisors. There are other programmes of work in terms of the Schools Improvement, uh, Improvement Programme, um, the Raising Attainment for All programme. You know, there is a wealth of universal activity uh, that is geared uh, front and centre in closing the attainment gap and reaching those children most in need. I'm afraid I don't have time for all the interventions that are requested. I'll take Mary Scanlon. Uh, thank you. Despite what is being said, in rural areas, the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation is a very blunt and ineffective tool in determining children with low attainment. So what is the Government doing to ensure that individual children, whether it is Betty Hill in Sutherland or in Inverness, get the benefit of additional support when it is needed, and how are they identified? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, that is the, the entire basis of having a, a national improvement framework that is very much about identifying those children uh, most in need uh, earlier on in their school career so that we can ensure uh, the right services and the right support at uh, the right time. Question number 11, Drew Smith. Thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the impact on poorer students in Scotland of the UK Government replacing bursaries with loans. Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, confirmation that the UK Government intends to abolish maintenance grants entirely uh, for the new undergraduate students in England from 2016-17 is of great concern to the Scottish Government, uh, raising as it does the, the question of the potential impact uh, on the Scottish funding block in future years. Drew Smith. Uh, I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Given that SNP MPs apparently oppose uh, that move from grants to loans in England, but presumably support the Scottish Government doing exactly the same thing for the poorest students in Scotland, does the Cabinet Secretary believe that debate around inequality would benefit from some more honesty about who the winners and losers are in her, her system, which sees the richer students twice as likely to get to university as poorer, poorer ones? and which, as a result of the 40 million cuts uh, to bursaries in Scotland, results in poorest students carrying the largest burden of debt. Cabinet Secretary. 
Presiding officer, unfortunately, what the member fails to recognise that in the context of a record number of Scots accepted into university, that there is an increase uh, in disadvantaged 18-year-olds in ap applying and going uh, to university under uh, this government's uh, terms of office. And he has to recognise that in consultation uh, with the National Union of Students and others, that this government responded to the very serious ask to put more money into the pockets of students. And we achieved that with the introduction of the minimum income guarantee, which I have increased uh, over uh, the past year. And the minimum income guarantee is the best uh, support package uh, for students living at home uh, in uh, the UK and of course as we move forward there will be further improvements to that package with an increase uh, in income uh, thresholds. Uh, this government has much to be proud of, presiding officer, and I would have hoped that in the spirit of having an open debate uh, about tackling inequality, that Mr Smith would have had the gumption to recognise that this government has maintained bursaries, has introduced a minimum income guarantee, has retained free tuition and, unlike others, has retained educational maintenance allowance. Question number 12, Joanne Lamont. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how many classroom assistants have been employed in secondary schools in each of the last five years. Minister Alistair Allen. Data from the annual teacher census published by the Scottish Government shows that the number of classroom assistants in Scottish publicly funded secondary schools was 877 in both the years 2011 and 2012, 948 in 2013, 1090 in 2014, and 1,052 in 2015. These figures show an increase of 20% in the number of classroom assistants over this period. Joanne Lamont. Can I thank the Minister for that information? I wonder if the Minister recognises the critical importance not just of classroom assistants, but all support staff in ensuring young people with additional needs are able to overcome barriers to learning, and critically, at secondary school level, their role in stopping young people dropping out of the system altogether. Given the, their importance in closing the gap in education, what steps um, will the Minister and the Cabinet Secretary take to ensure that local authorities are fully resourced to support the support structures inside our schools, as well as the teachers and uh, materials? Minister. Well, I do, of course, uh, recognise uh, the importance of all uh, support staff uh, in the education sector. And I think the fact uh, that the numbers uh, in secondary of classroom assistants specifically uh, have uh, shown a rise over the period uh, is, in very, is very encouraging for that reason. Uh, returning to the issue of the local government settlement, uh, I can only uh, really point to the fact uh, that uh, the draft budget confirmed that we are again making uh, available uh, a total funding package uh, for local authorities of £10.1 uh, uh, billion. Pounds. And, uh, I think that the uh, important uh, point that we have to recognise is the one I have made many times and other ministers have made about our financial predicament as a country. Uh, but that does not take away from the fact that despite those difficult circumstances, we have shown our commitment to local government. Question number 13, Richard Simpson. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what requirements must be met for homeschooled pupils to be eligible to sit SQA exams. Minister Alistair Allen. Homeschooled pupils must be registered with a centre approved by the Scottish Qualification Authorities uh, to sit exams. This could be either a school or a college. Dr Simpson. I thank the Minister for that reply. Um, the, what are the options for students who, for medical reasons, be it physical or mental illness, which has prevented them from attending school to complete the coursework, which counts towards their final grade through Curriculum for Excellence. Um, and th this failure to, to undertake the coursework appears to preclude them from actually sitting the exam. So I wonder if the Minister would actually have a, have a, take a look into this to, to make sure that homeschooled pupils are not discriminated against in terms of the coursework side if they do have physical or mental illness. Minister. I am very happy to come back to, to the member uh, after having uh, uh, looked uh, at some of the, the issues he raises. Uh, for, uh, in, in general, for, for home school pupils, uh, who are obviously, as a member, is aware, not always home school because of any uh, issue around disability, uh, there are uh, arrangements which uh, such pupils can make in terms of registering with schools and colleges uh, in order to be presented uh, for exams and also 
uh, we, we would uh, hope that and indeed encourage local authorities to take a reasonable approach uh, to ensure that uh, uh, other work necessary to, to gain a qualification of the kind the member is mentioning uh, is made possible and made available. But on the specific issue that he raises of uh, young people who have physical or other uh, uh, illnesses or disabilities, I'm more than happy to make a, uh, an investigation into that and get back to him. Thank you. Question number 14, John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support it is providing to the University of the West of Scotland to reduce the dropout rate, particularly among first-year students. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, retention rates at the University of the West of Scotland have improved over the last two years, although I'm sure uh, the University would always want to do better. I am confident the University is focused on increasing retention and is working with the Scottish Funding Council on a range of measures to support this. In the current academic year, uh, UWS has been allocated over £3.6 million from the Widening Access and Retention Fund uh, operated by the Scottish Funding Council uh, on behalf of the Scottish Government. John Scott. Thank you very much. Um, and given the potential financial impact on the Scottish higher education sector of the Government's draft budget announcement, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the Scottish Government retains a commitment to ensuring that there is adequate funding in place to support the excellent work in student attainment at UWS, that funding will be safeguarded for this key policy initiative, and that the possibility of additional funding is considered for universities such as UWS, who are successful at widening participation in higher education? Cabinet Secretary. Of course, uh, this government uh, has, in, over the last four years, invested over a billion pounds every year in higher education, and the draft uh, budget currently before Parliament uh, shows a, a proposed investment again um, of over um, a billion pounds. That is a not insignificant uh, amount of investment. But Mr Scott is right that it isn't just about getting young people uh, from diverse backgrounds into university. It's about ensuring uh, the successful uh, completion uh, of the university course and indeed successful progression uh, on to the world of work. And that does raise issues about how we support young people uh, who achieve a place at university both pastorally uh, and academically. And the University of West of Scotland, for example, had commissioned uh, a very specific report and have unleashed very uh, specific actions uh, and initiatives to address that point. In terms of the, the government, uh, widening access is a, a core part of our programme for government and through the, the Funding Council we will be making very clear uh, through the guidance letter um, our uh, priorities, the strategic priorities uh, for the sector and of course the Funding Council uh, has a role in liaising and monitoring and supporting uh, individual institutions uh, via the um, uh, outcome agreements. Question number 15, Elaine Murray. Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will fully fund Dumfries and Gallery Council for the capital and revenue costs of the increase in early learn learning and childcare entitlement to 1,140 hours. Minister Elaine Campbell. Uh, this Government has already provided local authorities with £329 million revenue and capital over two years in order to fully fund our most recent expansion of childcare to 600 hours. We have allocated an additional 140 million revenue and 30 million capital to local authorities in 2016-17. Dumfries and Galloway Council will receive an appropriate and proportionate share of this and future funding to meet its requirements. All local authority allocations are agreed with COSLA. Elaine Murray. Uh, I thank the Minister for that reply. The Scottish Government's discussion paper on expanding childcare states that providing more flexible provision will be a key element of the expansion to 1140 hours. Uh, and that the Scottish Government will build on work done through the Scotland Schools for the Future Programme and the Scottish Futures Trust to support the expansion of local authority accommodation. So can the Minister advise how negotiations with local authorities will be taken forward and what consider, consideration will be given to the particular needs of rural areas where access to childcare and early learning can be more difficult for families? Minister. Um, I thank uh, the member for making the points that she does, and certainly uh, work is ongoing uh, with the Scottish Future Trust, Trust to scope out uh, what we need in terms of capacity and the nature of that capacity, and we're also working with the Future Trust to refine our understanding of the capital requirements. Um, 
And, of course, the point she makes about the rurality of Dumfries and Galloway, and not only that local authority, but others, is part of the, the considerations that we need to take forward about how we deliver flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why, I, when I visited the borders, I was very impressed with the childminder, community childminders, as a way in which they dealt with some of the uh, barriers that they face because of the rural spread in which their children and families live in. And that's why uh, the First Minister made an announcement about how we enhance the, the childminder provision. But certainly, uh, we are always acutely aware of the the challenges that being in our rural authority presents, but certainly we have given Dumfries and Galloway so far their appropriate proportionate share of the money we've invested so far, which is nearly £15 million, uh, a mixture of capital revenue and additional funding for two euros, and we'll continue to work with local authorities and the Scottish Futures Trust to make sure that we can deliver for families in the way that we've set out. Thank you. I'm afraid that ends questions this afternoon, and we have to now